dear brothers and sisters, today is a day that we can truly say, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Why? Because today we remember that death is swallowed up in victory. We do grieve today, don't we? But we don't grieve as those who have no hope. We have great hope and great joy that is ours in the Lord Jesus Christ. We've come together today to to give thanks to the Lord, really. To give thanks to the Lord for the life and ministry of of Dr. Spiro Zodiades. I thought today that I would share some scripture passages with you. Just some things that the Lord laid on my heart. About a year ago, my own grandmother passed away, and as we sat there by the bedside, just moments after she breathed her last, some of the parents said to the little children gathered around, they said, she's not here. She's with Jesus now. And I couldn't help but to think of the words of the angel on that resurrection morning. Why do you seek the living among the dead? He's not here. He's risen. And that's why we rejoice today. That's why we give thanks. Because we know that our Redeemer lives. And He will stand at last on earth. And that final day, I will see with my very own eyes, eyes that He created for this one purpose, to see and to savor Him On that very day, I will kneel on the knees that He gave for that very purpose to worship Him. On that day, my friends, we will stand on the very feet that He created in the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ. We will see the Lord Jesus Christ and it will be good. And we look forward to that. Amen? We look forward to seeing the Lord Jesus Christ. As I thought about today, There's so many things we could say about the life and ministry of Dr. Spiro Zodiades. But in the end, it's not about him. The psalmist said what? Not unto us, O Lord. Not unto I. Not unto me, Lord. Be glory, but unto you. Be glory. And so today is a day of celebration and thanksgiving mixed, yes, with grief, but not a hopeless grief. To say that Dr. Zodiades influenced our lives is probably the greatest understatement that we could make today. Not only our lives, but maybe the lives of thousands and perhaps millions around the world. He he was a ministry pioneer in the line of the Apostle Paul. But when I think of Dr. Zodiades, the one thing I think of is a godly man. I learned a lot from him. I learned Greek from him. Not well enough, he said. (laughs) But I learned what it means to be a godly man. And for that, I am forever grateful. He was a son, a brother, a father, a grandfather, and a very, very dear friend to so many. For 61 years, he loved one woman, and he loved her well, and she loved him well. Thank you for that example. We give praise to the Lord for that. My wife and I look on your relationship, and we say, we want to be just like that. We want to be just like that. And thank you, Mrs. Odiades, for sharing Dr. Zodiades with us. Three scriptures come to mind. I tried to think of just two words, but I couldn't. So three scriptures come to mind when I think of Dr. Zodiades. The first is John fifteen thirteen. Jesus said, Greater love has no man than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. His entire life was a life of sacrifice. He was always, always generously giving and always frugally living so that he could generously give more. Whether you were a young pastor in need of education or a young child in Indonesia in need of food, 
He sacrificed. Greater love has no man than this, than one who would lay down his life for his friends. I also think of 3 John, verse 4, where the apostle said, I have no greater joy than when my children walk in truth. For, for so many years, Dr. Zodiati served young pastors all over the world. Myself, a young pastor, 20 years old, I look for somebody to disciple me. This is how we actually met him. I actually met him this way. I look for somebody to disciple me, and, and I couldn't find anybody. Local church pastors around my area, nobody. And one day I met him, and I told him this, and he said, You will be my grandson, and I will teach you. And he loved teaching, didn't he? And he loved Bibli- the work of biblical exegesis. And he loved seeing his personal students excelling in the Word. My favorite story, and I'll tell it quickly, about Dr. Zodiades occurred probably six or seven years ago. It was in Zodiades' home. I was staying in their guest room. And it was 4 o'clock in the morning at least. And I saw a light. And I thought, oh my goodness, what is this? And I, and I heard Dr. Zodiades over in the next room in his study. And so I wanted to make sure everything was okay. And I stumbled over one eye still shut with, you know, in sleep. And, and I stumbled over there to the, to the study. And his desk was against the wall. He didn't see me standing there. And there he was in his robe and pajamas. His pajama pants was tucked in his, in his sock, I remember. And he's sitting there just writing, writing, writing. And uh, I went and stood, stood beside him. And he still didn't see me. <laughs> He was so intent. And after it's three or four minutes, he saw me. He looked up. And he got a smile from ear to ear. And here's what he said. Now he's 80, 81 or 82 years old this time. He said, Oh, Joe, the word has been so rich this morning. Come, let me teach you what I've learned. And I said in that minute, I said, oh, Lord, when I'm 80, let me have a love for the Word. Lord, when I'm 40, let me have a love for the Word like that. Greater love has no man than this, and a man lays down his life for his friends. I have no greater joy than my children walk in truth. And one final verse comes to mind. And uh, I won't give you any explanation. It will be self-evident. It's Hebrews 11.38. Speaking of the people of faith, and you know what it says? Of whom the world was not worthy. Thank you, Lord, for the life and ministry of Sparrow's Zodiades.